Hey everybody, Dave here. Hope you're having an awesome day. So, I had this character and this idea that I wanted to make, man, it goes back probably 15 or so years. And it's this guy here. Let me let the camera zoom in on that. There we go. And uh, what he is, is he's just this silly little character that's got really lanky long arms and they kind of just drag on the ground. And uh, I was originally going to call him, I, I had like a series of them that I drew up and I was going to call him Losers or Loza. But I was like, yeah, I kind of changed that. So I renamed it. I'm going to call him uh, Bob. And the series is going to be called Lunkheads. And I thought it's kind of cool these little Lunkheads just dragging along. So I have been wanting to make this for a long time. And so I'm going to go ahead and sculpt one and uh, see how it turns out. So come on, let's do it. Oh, one more thing. Stay tuned to the very end because I had an idea that I wanted to originally kind of turn these into some NFTs. Um, I kind of worked through the process of how to make an NFT and it's not quite right for me at this time. There's some things that I need to look into about NFTs and some things that people brought up, but it, it's neither here nor there because I've got a cooler idea. So I want you to st stay tuned to the very end. I'm going to show you something um, that I think might be a fun idea. So stay tuned to the end. <laughs> Okay, so here's my drawing that I was showing you in the beginning, and um, I did make a vector version of this, so I'll show you that a little bit later, but I'm using some 16 gauge armature wire. This is actually my first um, armature that I've actually made, and so um, I did get a little bit of help from a guy on YouTube called Proco, Proco 3D, so I'll put a link to his um, tutorial, but essentially what he did was he made this continuous armature and it worked out pretty great for me, except I did run into a little snag, but it's not based off of his um, tutorial. So, uh, yeah, the proportions are a little goofy, so they didn't quite follow his tutorial either, just because he's got those long, lanky arms, but no big deal. Uh, I got a ball of aluminum foil here, and I was just kind of smashing around. Yeah, there's that little vector drawing that I made. Um, so I'm getting this smoothed out and best to size I could. I actually, in hindsight, should have made the head a little bit smaller um, because when I put the clay on, it actually got bigger. But speaking of clay, there's my $1.99 Sculpey from the thrift store. So I'm rolling this out with a little rod. I did since this video. I found a Goodwill. I found a clay smasher roller for $5.99, brand spanking new. So that was pretty awesome. So what I'm doing now is I'm just smoothing this out, getting it. Um, as nice and smooth as I can and because he's his head is kind of a little lumpy it's kind of fun like I don't I don't have to get it perfectly glass smooth like a ball what I'm doing here was just adding a little bit of a chin and then a nose here because he does have a little little pointed chin and then for the nose I'm just taking a tool and I'm kind of just smashing the clay on there not being super careful about it right now because I'll come back and rework and smooth everything out now I'm just taking a little carving tool and I'm literally just cutting right into the clay to make his mouth. He kind of has this look that's like, hmm, you know, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I think it's kind of fun. But the uh, carving in worked out great for me. It's got a nice little uh, depth to it. I think that's going to work great. All right, for the eyes, I'm just taking the end of a gel pen here and just kind of poking some little holes in here. I did end up making these a little bit bigger on the second round, but um, rolled out some eyes and <laughs> they're kind of bugging out there. So I thought I need to open this up a little bit. And I'm also going to trim off the back of that eye just a little bit there. So when I put that back in, yeah, that looks a little bit better, better. They're not bulging out. So um, I'm liking that a little bit better. All right, then the top of the head, it was a little too flat for my liking, so I went ahead and just added a little bit extra clay, and now the proportions look pretty great to what I was intending the proportions to look like, so <laughs> this is kind of fun watching them come together. Let's see, okay, I'm going to, yeah, I was putting some little lines in his eyes. Now, on this round, I tried actually carving it in. I'm not sure that this was the best approach, um, I was able to re-sculpt it and kind of uh, massage that and blend it in a little bit, 
But then I tried another approach. I thought, what if I roll some little little snakes of clay and put them on that way and then smash them down? So I don't know. I'm not sure which one worked out better. I kind of went back and forth on this. And I'm not like a professional sculptor, so I'm kind of just playing around and experimenting. I think that's kind of the fun of it. It's I don't know exactly what's right or wrong, so yeah, you know, <laughs> if, it, if it doesn't work out, whatever. So here I am just kind of smoothing it out blending it and I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the other side as well okay the ears I took some clay and actually cut out two pieces at the same time so they'd be the same size and I kind of just um, looked around where I wanted on the head maybe a little too far back I'll pull that up just a little bit and like I did with the nose I'm just gonna kind of quickly sculpt those on and I'll blend that all in later but right now I'm just trying to get it so it's attached to the head kind of smoothing that out and then I'm just taking some tools and just essentially drawing on the clay carving in some of the little more like cartoon ear lines and so there it is I think it looks pretty cool I think it's about ready to bake I did make this little um loop on the back here because whenever I bake a lot of times it flattens out the back of the head in the oven so I'm going to try this little ring to kind of keep it off and it kind of worked but it baked on to the uh, piece and when I took it off it actually kind of left like a chunk so I'm going to have to add a little bit more clay and I'll, I'll fill that in sand it out but yeah we'll get that fixed. All right so on the body I put some aluminum foil on the armature there and then I'm just wrapping it in some tape. Um, the tape will just help kind of smooth it out. I think I've seen this, some people do this on some sculpting videos, so I think that's what that's for. So I went ahead and did it myself. I don't know if it helps the clay stick to it or not, but um, it worked out fine for me. Now for the arm, I rolled the snake and then I, I kind of filleted it open and then I was just kind of pinching it around there, but with this armature system, and because of his arms, his arms are really long and skinny. And the wire, because it was wrapped around itself, is just way too thick. And I'm, I'm just not liking this at all. It's not working. So this is kind of where that technique didn't quite work for me. But that's okay. I'm going to snap these off. And I will just um, take a piece of simple straight wire and make some new arms. All right, so I'm uh, adding some clay around the body there, a little clay around the sleeves. I just rolled some flat pieces and I just kind of wrapped it around and then I'll just continue to work and blend that stuff in. So again, I, I there's probably a smarter way to do this, but <laughs> it worked for me. All right, so I, I still have a lot of cleaning up work to do, getting everything kind of smoothed out and how I want it. And again, because he's kind of this lanky, frumpy kind of guy, it doesn't have to be like perfectly smooth. Um, it's a t-shirt, it's clothes. So I added a little bit on the back there. For the shoe, you can see I kind of built a little wall around the wire. And then I took this solid piece of clay. This is on the foot here. And I just kind of filled that in and then closed it off. And then I'll blend that in with my blending tool. So. I kind of experimented on the other foot. It worked for me, so I went ahead and did it for this foot as well. Then I took my exacto knife and I kind of trimmed down the shape of the shoe because it ended up a little too boxy for me, so I'm just kind of trimming that down. And then I use this little coffee straw and poke some little holes. You can see on the left there, I had just laced it and look kind of dorky so I thought what if I made these little rivets so I made those little dots and then I kind of poked some little holes just so it looked maybe like the laces were going through some rivets and it was a little extra work but I think comparing the two I think I like this look a lot better it just looks cleaner and looks more deliberate the other one it looks a little bit messy plus I sent a picture to my daughter and said hey which shoe do you like and she said yeah this one looks way better so I kind of knew it already, but sometimes you need that confirmation to be like, okay. <laughs> it's almost like I don't want to change it, but I know I need to change it. So I went ahead and 
scraped all that work off. No big deal. It's just just clay. It can be redone. And I'm really happy with the result. I think that looks a lot better. All right, you can see I got the head painted up, and I'm just drilling a hole in the back of the head because I'm going to have his it slide onto the neck there. You can see the long, skinny neck. I've got everything primed up white. And I found this um, Citadel Blue, and it is almost perfect for, like, uh, blue jean material. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of brush in here and get these jeans all painted up. Sometimes this part is really relaxing to me. I really love kind of taking a deep breath and, and just pulling a paint stroke. It's, uh, it's kind of fun. I did paint the shirt white, even though it was primed white. And I had to do uh, quite a few coats of this just because the white is so thin, but um, gives a nice look. Then I found this green for his shoes. And I thought just the color combo with the blue looked kind of kind of neat. I don't know. I was going to paint him red, and I was like, eh, I don't want him to look like a clown. Paint him yellow, maybe a little too bright. So I think this green actually looks kind of cool. It's got a nice little earthy feel to it. So just getting in there with the brush. I'm going to paint the shoes. I'll paint the uh, soles kind of like a tan color, like uh, like an old pair of Vans. And then for the eyelets, I took s some Citadel Metallic. And I am just painting the rivets and the little eyelets, not rivets, sorry, the eyelets of the shoe, just so they look like they have a little metallic touch to them. Okay, I wanted to get the base finished before I did his hands, just so I knew where the hands would lay. And I did this little peg system, because I thought, yeah, it needs to hold because it's top heavy. But even with those pegs, it just kept, it was just falling over because the, the head is so big. So I've got the, these magnets, and I thought, if I can put a magnet in the base and then a magnet in the shoe... I think that might work, and I was, I was going to go with just the one, but just to be safe, I went ahead and did a, a magnet on both heels, so I pulled that back heel peg off, and I'll show you what it looks like here. We'll pop this off, and it really sticks now. Um, yeah, I had a square magnet and a circle magnet, but whatever, um, and I got the magnets in the base there, so now that that's done, I can kind of see where the hands and how long to make the arms. I just wanted to make sure... Um, I didn't mess anything up, so that's looking pretty cool. I think that's going to work good to secure him. Now for the hands, I was kind of doing the same thing. I know they look a little bit like Wreck-It Ralph hands. Um, I, I try and cut the two at the same time, and then what I do is I'm just cutting where the knuckles would be just so I can have a little bit of flex in the, um, in the hand when I bend the fingers. So just doing a little score like that it allows those fingers to... Kind of bend and then i'm going to go in and sculpt out and round out those fingers they're a little square and chunky right now so i'm trying to figure out if his hands were just dragging on the ground and they, they were kind of relaxed and kind of curled up a little bit that's kind of the look i'm going for so and i'm also <clears throat> he's gonna have gloves on because when i was doing the artwork thinking about possibly doing nfts um, a glove worked really nice because I could switch out things in his hand. But the first hand was way too big, so I went ahead and <laughs> made the hand a lot smaller. And I think it looks a lot bigger. I think the other hand was competing with his, um, with his shoes. Now, I normally paint my bases black, but I think this one, I want it to look a little bit more classy. So I'm using this wood stain, and man, it looks really nice. So I'm in the home stretch. I'm going to wrap this up, uh, finish staining this. Uh, stay tuned for kind of uh, my crazy idea at the very end of this video. So, all right, let's call this one good. Okay, there he is. We'll uh, take some turnaround shots of this. But first, I want to tell you about my crazy idea. Okay, so with the NFT, you have to have a wallet. You have to have Bitcoin. And there, it, it can be kind of a pain in the neck, to be honest. And then you have to pay gas fees. And so I thought, you know what? What if I just went straight to my audience and said, hey, instead of having to do all that stuff, what I'm going to do is provide you something that you can purchase directly and own an actual true physical piece of artwork. So what I did was I went ahead and I designed this little card here. Um, it's the Lunkhead Bob trading card. Dr. Toys there. And I have hand-drawn, hand-markered, and hand-inked uh, 10 of these. They're numbered here in the corner. Uh, they're, they're initialed up here, DR, and they're signed down here, uh, my name, Dave Russell. And I have 10 of them. And what I would like to do is 
uh, over the period of five weeks, do 10 a week. So there'd be a total of 50 in the collection. And in each collection, there's going to be one chase. That is Bonehead Bob. And um, so at the end, there will be five um, rare cards. And so uh, here's the rest of them there. Ah. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put these on my Instagram channel, which is Dr. Toys, D-R dot underscore toys. And I'm going to post these for sale. They're going to start at 25 bucks a piece, with the exception of the uh, Bone Bob, because that one's uh, going to be a little bit more rare. That one's going to start at 40 bucks. And what we're going to do is, at the end of the five weeks, after 50 of them have sold, because they're numbered, I'm going to do a drawing. And the card number that gets drawn will win the original sculpture of Lunkhead Bob from this video. Oh, and uh, the chases, if you purchase this one, your name will be put in twice, or your number will be put in twice. So let me know in the comments below if you think that's a cool idea. If not, eh, you know, whatever. I don't, it's just something fun. Oh, and all the money that I make from this is gonna go straight to my daughter's college fund. I'm not pocketing any of this. It's going straight to her education. She's actually studying entertainment design and wants to get into character design, animation, that kind of fun stuff. So yeah, um, check out my Instagram, let me know. Take it easy, as always. It's a great day to be a toy nerd. Have a good one.